well, it was fun, but it's time to get back to being serious and talk about the real issues. And by that, I mean moderators. But thanks anyway, Mr. Rebzine. You at least doubled my subscription number. So for that, I guess you're all right. Anyway, what this comes down to is recently this one subscriber uh, subscribed to me. Uh, he's some kind of D&D &D cowboy. I don't know. And um, he talks about moderators making excuses for them, saying that they're as the referee in a game and they give red slips to players. This implies that A, this is a game, this is not a fucking game, this is your civil rights on the line, uh, and B, who the fuck made them the referee? Who decided that they were of the authority to decide who can and can't post and who can and can't say it? See, this is the magic of property. Um, when someone harasses another person, who defines what that harassment or trolling or shit posting or whatever is? It's the moderators. And how do the moderators get that kind of authority or have the kind of knowledge necessary to make that clarification? None. It's the magic of property. Apparently, a uh, moderator's logic relies solely on magic to let them be the ones to make the call of what is and isn't acceptable behavior. Now, when a moderator harasses you or trolls you, who defines that? Nobody. Because moderators live in a world of magic where they are immune to all criticism, all repercussions, all legal hoo-ha, and they can do no wrong. So thus, this is a class struggle. This is what it comes down to. It's a hierarchy. And I'm a, as a communist, I am against that. Uh, more so, I'm against it on the internet because it's much more louder. The internet is ran like a cult. Like a cult, moderators are the cult leaders. As cult leaders, they are of the highest hierarchy and use peer pressure, abuse, whether verbal or physical, to get what they want to make others cooperate with their cult mentality. And eventually people fall in line. Mostly because they like authority, they like the idea of a religious cult telling them what to do, and partially because under pressure most people will cave because most people are weak. So there's your ex explanation for moderators. It's not magic, it's just people are weak, stupid, and evil. The three primary elements to the moderator. Now, on to the article I'm going to link to, where the government wants to make it to where you're not anonymous online. You have to give all of your information, which quite frankly isn't that hard to come across anyway. Uh, you've seen how many times I've linked to people's phone numbers and shit. All you gotta do is browse the white pages. It's not that hard. This isn't about um, you know, putting people's faces out there. It's not transparency. We're already transparent. This is to prove a point. This is to intimidate people into acting nicer online. Good luck with that. The only way people are going to act nicer is when they are equal. Equality breeds, um, you know, content. It breeds peace. It brings serenity. As long as a moderator gets to decide who is and isn't acceptable, there will never be anyone nice on the internet. There will never be an end to cyberbullying. You want to get rid of cyberbullying? Get rid of the fucking moderators. They're the only ones capable of bullying because they're the ones defining what bullying is. And that is not their fucking right in life. That is not their place. So that's what you got to do. Now, uh, the law states that anyone whose post is disliked, I don't know exactly what that means. I hope to God that's not the wording, because that could mean literally anything. Um, has to The person whose post was disliked has to give their information to the website, to give to the authorities, I don't know. Um, but essentially, yeah, if someone doesn't like your post for whatever reason, he has a right to your information. This isn't what bothers me in and of itself. What bothers me is, what is the moderator's place in all of this? Is the moderator going to be held responsible at any point in time, considering all this time he's been the one in sole control of the environment? Like 4chan. 
four chan is responsible for a child's death. A, a 14 year old something boy decided to cam whore on chat and he put a gun to his head because he wanted to look cool and he ended up killing himself. Now, who's at fault? The little boy for being stupid? Possibly. At least a little bit. But it is mostly the fault of those around him who gave him that environment to egg him on to do that. Uh, can you blame any individual? Well, I don't think you can, except for the moderator. Because guess what? The moderator finds time to ban everybody else. Oh, he can ban the guy posting My Little Pony. Oh, he bans Jim Prophet. Oh, he bans um that one guy, whatever that fucker's name was. He was, he was some Christian Zeliot. Um, he bans uh, Blart and Storm Troll or, or whatever, or Glitter Snatch, anybody. But you mean to tell me he cannot, uh, you know, suppress that that issue going on? He cannot ban people to prevent a child from committing suicide? If he saw where the topic was going and he saw that it was getting out of hand, why didn't he step in? He manages, Steve manages to find time to step in when we're arguing and nobody's life is on the fucking line. But conveniently, oh, moderators can't be held responsible for the actions of individuals. It's their own responsibility. But meanwhile, it's not our own responsibility to be owners of the content we write. So, moderators get to dictate what we can say, but then somehow we're still held responsible for what we say. That does not make sense. Either we have ownership, or we don't. If we have ownership, then that means we have ownership, not just the fucking moderator of his forum. We have moderatorship of our content. And by extension, as owners of our content, no one is allowed to infringe upon it. No one is allowed to censor it. No one is allowed to delete it. No one is allowed to stop it. And that way, when the authorities want to ask us questions, they ask us as individuals rather than as this collective body of cyber bullies. Ooh. But apparently that concept is lost to stupid cult members because they don't want to think about it. They just want their precious godlike figure, Stee, to do the thinking for them. And I'm not going to live in a world like that. I refuse to. So, that's my question here. What would this law mean for moderators? Would it hold them accountable for the content, and thus they would have a reason to ban people and to censor people, because if they don't, it could cost them, they could get fined, they could get jailed, because as the property owners, they are solely responsible for whatever goes on on their property. If someone sells crack on your property, you would get arrested, because just as you can kick somebody out for saying some shit about the Republican Party, you can kick somebody out before they can sell crack in your house, but you didn't. Therefore, you're held responsible. Or, is the guy that sells crack hold solely responsible? In which case, the homeowner does not have a right to kick him out. Because he's not held responsible for anything the other individual does. Therefore, he needs to mind his own fucking business. That's what this comes down to. If you're going to have the power, you have to have the responsibility. Uh, you know, it's pretty sad that I have to quote Spider-Man here, but it's true. With great power comes great responsibility. That's what being an adult is all about. These fucking moderators and these stupid little kids that defend them think like five-year-olds, where they get to wave their dicks around and just say, I'm the boss, but it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't have any sort of reason to it, no m method. It's just violence. It's just force. It's just the biggest kid kicking sand in the faces of everybody else. And they're just going along with it either because they're scared, because they're fucking stupid, or because deep down they like it, because they're sick and depraved. And that's cyberbullying. Not this bullshit about calling someone a faggot online. And hopefully... Law, the law system will see that. Hopefully our courts will see that. Hopefully our Senate and state representatives will see that. Hopefully the general voting population will see that before it gets worse.
but I'm not holding my breath. So see you later.